Hello, and welcome to the Neptunes. I'm Deirdre Ahern, and I'm the team leader and the special education teacher on the Neptunes. I'm going to take my mask off because our videographer is over six feet away from me. So families, welcome again to the Neptunes. We're so happy to have all the fifth graders with us, and we're very proud of the way that they have transitioned into middle school. They are all learning their schedules and can navigate around the Kiva and throughout the whole building. The kids are doing a great job keeping their backpacks with them in each class and being responsible for their own materials. Very important at this time of COVID and being careful not to share. So I wanna give you a little tour of the Kiva. Your students come in this door. We have one way signs. The traffic flows this way into the Kiva. The first room that we come to is the math room. So if that is your student's first class, they will go directly into the math room. Across from the math room, around the corner here is our LA room. Again, we have our one-way signs. When the students exit class, they come out of their classroom and walk in this direction through the Kiva. The next room that we come to in the Kiva area is the social studies room. Again, students would exit the social studies room and walk around this way to the science room. If they exit the science room to go to their next class, or when they exit the science room to go to their next class, they go through the locker hallway. So they do not enter the main area of the Kiva again and have crossing traffic. Something else that the students are doing a really great job about, the new policy of one person in the restroom at a time. They're all learning to knock first and wait. Okay, here we are outside of our Kiva doors. I wanted to show you where the students take their mask break. Two times a day, we come outside as a group and we go onto the field over there and the students are allowed to take their mask off. We encourage and um, enforce social distancing when they're outside, but they are able to have a break from the mask and get some fresh air. students and parents. Nice to see you. This is Mrs. Strobel. I'm going to be uh, your child's math teacher for the year. This is my one of my 20th year teaching and I uh, taught math for most of those years so I'm um, pretty excited and I will be a virtual teacher this year hopefully not forever but um, I'll, I'm teaching virtually with the help of Mrs. Strook is in the classroom and she's a huge help and you'll hear a little bit about her later. Um, but yeah, this is gonna be uh, fifth grade math. So we're doing a lot of the common core curriculum and some of the topics that you know already we're, we're dealing with are place value. That's our first topic. And pretty quickly we'll be getting into um, decimals and uh, exponents and then moving into all of the operations that go along with that, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. Um, we'll be dealing um, more with fractions. We have a big fraction unit coming up this year and We'll be talking with measurement, talking about measurement and data as well. And then we get into geometry, which has always been one of my favorite topics. Um, and you know, just practicing along the way with all those all those steps and learning how to, you know, cooperate math and to um, just general learning. So I'm excited about teaching it this year. It's been interesting teaching it virtually. Um, the children are learning a lot about technology about the same time that I am. So. We're working on a lot of things together, but um, but yeah, I mean, some of the programs that you might have seen at home, we're doing something called Nearpod and Kahoot, and um, the students have been involved in a lot of you know virtual kind of activities and games, and seem to be enjoying it very much. But um, that's not to you know we want to do hands on in the classroom too. It's really important to me that the kids can do some things you know with their hands in math. That's one of my favorite things to teach too. Is just getting into the projects. And want to continue that in the classroom and we're going to find ways to incorporate that as well so um, 
I wanted to kind of show you how it all works. So um, this is the way that, you know, a lot of the kids, especially the bike, bike, virtual Vikings, will be seeing similar what I, to what I see in the classroom. So you can see there's a classroom over here. You can get a view of the students this way and a view of the students over here. So I can see pretty much everyone in the whole classroom. Um, and then when I go to teach, you know, when I'm, I'm referring to different things, I just go and I can share my screen and we can move on to all different kinds of things that I have already set up here um, ready to go. So I have like a Nearpod activity that students worked on today so you can see how that works. I'll pull that up with my screen share. The students are part of this here, the participants, so you can see everyone that's um, in that group. And then when we start to do lessons, the students will come in here and then they just put a code in. So today we put in this code for my first class and I was able to see they all, you know, we made sure they all got in and then they were practicing those exercises. So you can kind of see, I think this is one of them too. Let's see if I can share this with you. And uh, you can kind of see how this goes. So this is an activity I have set up waiting for students to sign in. But meanwhile, you can go through and I can minimize this. You can kind of see what the students say. So they're going through, they're doing a lesson. There's a little um, reminder about the different forms that the students have been writing in and practicing. There's a video that they watch. And then there's some activities that they're doing after that. And that's kind of how that works. And at the very end, there's a quick assessment with some questions. And then it tells them their score, how they did. And yeah, so that's Nearpod. That might be, you know, we might be using that in class periodically and Kahoot. And so once I'm done with um, all of that, I can go back to my video here, stop sharing, and go back to the classroom. And a lot of times I'll do that, and then I'll go back to the classroom, and then check in, see if we have any questions or concerns, do some examples, and then I can right, go right back out to something else. I have, um, I like this, this is my whiteboard, so I can communicate with the students here, you know, write some math lessons, uh, I, can, I can actually even do typing and stuff too, but sometimes it's it's nice just to be able to pretend you're writing on, you're writing on a whiteboard like we did in the classroom before. Um, so I have a lot of tools here that I'll be using. And again, I have uh, Mrs. Shookus in the classroom, so when we have handouts and things to do, she can hand those out and we can watch the kids and help the kids. So, you know, it's very interesting. All this is new, but, um, you know, we just want to be there for your children and, and to make all this work. And we need your help with that. So any, any questions and concerns, please, we're easy to get a hold of an email. Um, you know, we'd love to meet you. And so, yeah, we're excited to be here and, and make this work. So so that's that's a little bit about my room and my classroom and how it works. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to things. <laughs> but good to meet everyone. Hopefully I'll see everyone soon. Hi. I'm Kim Shukas, and I am the in-room person for Mrs. Strobel's virtual math classes. So I'm the person in the room for all four math classes. I help Mrs. Strobel by getting the worksheets printed. I start the Zooms, and I also help the kids during the class with any questions that they have. Hi, I'm Mrs. Bagley. I teach language arts for the Neptunes. Welcome to our back to school night. Uh, your children have made a great transition to fifth grade. We're transitioning from Seesaw to Google Classroom. So there's a little adjustment, but we're doing a great job. So here's some of the units that we cover in language arts. With the writing unit, one of the first units that we did was fifth grade me. And that was a getting to know you activity for the students. It was an opportunity to see, for me to see them as writers. And what we're gonna do with fifth grade me is the students drafted, we typed it up and then we sealed it away in an envelope and we're gonna open it at the end of our sixth grade loop. So that should be pretty fun to see. Right now, we're currently starting our personal narrative unit. Right now we are looking at some mentor text to see some examples of student fifth grade personal narratives and we are starting to brainstorm. We're gonna take that piece through the writing process and publish a final piece. Some other writing units that we're gonna do will be informational writing. We will then follow that up with argumentative opinion writing. And then throughout the year, we do open-ended responses to literature. So there's a reading writing connection. With reading, one of the activities that we're starting right now at the beginning of the year is reading strategies. They're reading comprehension strategies. We're doing it in a kid-friendly manner. We're starting with visualizing, and that's a really great one to start with because it ties into our personal narrative writing that we're doing in the classroom. 
because with personal narrative, you want to make sure you're descriptive and using sensory details with the five senses is really helpful. So we're practicing seeing that in our reading as well so that we can apply it to our writing. Other items that we will work on with reading this year is shared inquiry discussion where we look with we work with um, short stories some junior grade book stories to get the students involved in discussion so that is really good to help with elaboration with speaking as well as written elaboration while we write we will be looking at fiction and nonfiction, so we will be working with elements of fiction and seeing if the students can apply that when they are reading and we also do a figurative language unit in fifth grade. Other activities that we work on throughout the year, we will be doing some spelling. We have not started that yet, but we will be doing that. There will be grammar mini lessons. We did one during our Zoom meeting, one of the Wednesdays, and there will be some editing mini lessons too. So language arts has a lot to it. The reading, the writing, the spelling, the vocabulary, the editing, and we're trying to put it all together and right now the kids are doing a great job and thank you hello neptune's parents and guardians um, mr matthew social studies teacher here on the neptune's team um, i'll start by telling you a little bit about myself um, it's my 21st year teaching here at the middle school um, go back to the old middle school a long time ago and all those years i've been teaching social studies i love the subject and Look forward to sharing that love with your kids over this year and next. Um, I live in Westerly, Rhode Island, and I have uh, an 11-year-old daughter named Sienna and a 9-year-old daughter named Lucia. So I got kids right around the ages of your kids, uh, too. Um, anyway, social studies this year uh, will be um, fifth grade curriculum, obviously, uh, the focus being history. Uh, right now, we're just starting the age of exploration and that unit should take us right through the first trimester. Uh, the second trimester will be Colonial America, and we'll finish the year with the uh, Revolution. So just three units, uh, plenty of time to really get into them and, uh, and uh, make the most of it though, it should be fun. Um, social studies uh, will also involve current events this year. Uh, each trimester, your child will be responsible for doing a current event, which is basically like a little project we're still be learning about in the weeks ahead. So one per trimester. Um, grading um, primarily well, will be based on quizzes uh, and projects um, for assessments, uh, not so much as in tests. Uh, so there'll be a few bigger grades per trimester. And the instruction basically is uh, mostly student-centered versus teacher-directed. So. Uh, hopefully your kids aren't sitting and listening to me too much. They'll be active and hopefully is uh, engaged throughout. Um, doing a lot of note taking and uh, summarizing as well. Uh, reading for information, obviously, and uh, being able to identify main idea and supporting details will be a big focus this year as well. So I look forward to a great year. We're already off to a great start. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to email and uh, um, follow it. The kids are doing a Google Classroom uh, as well. Thanks, and I look forward to meeting you all in person soon. Bye. Hi, I'm Mrs. Perry. I'm the TA for the Neptune's team, and you'll see me in the science and social studies classrooms, helping any students who have questions or need some extra help with their work. Hi, Neptune's parents. Um, my name is Mrs. Galasso. Uh, I've enjoyed getting to know your students this year. We've been having a lot of fun in fifth grade science. Um, so a little bit about fifth grade science in the middle school. We follow the next generation science standards in the district now. Um, and so those are new standards that we adopted a few years ago, um, which has uh, changed our curriculum, also has changed the way we teach. Um, it, it's a great, Set of standards. I love the way we teach with the NGSS, we call it. Um, uh, along with an NGSS, um, I use the 5E model, which is based on the NGSS in science. And so 5E um, is sort of uh, the opposite of the way you probably learn science as a child. Uh, the, the typical way of learning science used to be to um, learn the material and then do the experiment at the end. Um, research Research now shows that uh, we all learn better when we put our hands on and explore first and then learn the material later. So
So if with the 5E model, we engage the students with some sort of a phenomena first, um, something they're curious about out there in the world. Uh, we explore by doing an experiment um, or something hands-on. They don't necessarily know all the answers at that point. They're just gathering information. Um, and then we do the explaining of the science concepts after they've actually done the hands-on exploring, which is um, a great way to learn. Um, and then we extend beyond that, um, extend your learning beyond what we've done um, in that experiment, um, maybe by giving like a, an article about how that science concept um, connects to something happening in the world, um, and then um, moving on to the um, elaborating where you take it uh, even one step further. Um, so that's the model I use here in science this year, I love it. Um, science is always inquiry based, that whole 5E model is based on inquiry. Um, we are work on science skills, which in a minute you'll see we're doing in the classroom today. Um, problem solving, um, we use the engineering design process in fifth grade also, um, which is all based on solving problems uh, that connect with the real world. And of course we try to do as much hands-on learning. Even to, in the time that we're in now with COVID, um, we are still doing hands-on in the science classroom. If, for instance, um, in the classroom we have triple beam balances around the room. We're working on the science skill of uh, measuring mass today. Um, everybody's sitting at their own desk with their own balance. And then when we are done, um, everybody wipes down their own balance with sanitizing wipes before the next students come in the room. Um, with other experiments this year, I'll be giving each student's their own supplies, uh, disposable supplies that they can throw away at the end of the experiment. So sometimes we um, use uh, tools that we sanitize afterwards, and sometimes we uh, get materials that we'll just throw away at the end. Um, I have animals in the classroom. I'm sure you've heard about some of them, so I'll just show you some of them um, around the room. This tank over here, I have some little frogs. These are fire-bellied toads. Um, and they are uh, ones that the kids like to look at. They kind of hide around the corner here, but they're in this tank. Um, and one that the uh, kids enjoy watching when they come in the room. Um, back here, we have a new addition, baby snails that just joined us last week from Mrs. Perry's house, our TA. Um, and the kids enjoy watching them. Um, this is a African clawed frog. Um, and he swims, he's 100% aquatic, so the kids like him too. Um, these are goggles that we just used for uh, experiment last week, um, and they got sanitized afterwards. And um, by the way, if your child has their own set of goggles, I've encouraged them to bring them in because we will be using them. This first unit that we are doing this year is called Properties of Matter. And so um, if they have their own, that would be great because um, we're gonna be wearing them a lot. Um, over here in this tank, we have a big toad and a couple of salamanders. Um, the kids actually even haven't seen all of the animals yet. I bring them out for something I do that's called nature shares uh, about once a week, and they get a chance to see the animals and touch the animals. Um, way over here on this side of the room, um, I have some uh, insects from my yard that I brought in, a uh, woolly bear caterpillar, um, a Katie did in the in here. He's in the back corner, um, and in here our latest addition, which is our praying mantis, um, and the kids really like him too. He's a lot of fun. So uh, just try to keep some nature in the classroom. I'm big on nature for sure. Um, a little bit about me, which I didn't say. Um, before I was a teacher, I worked for the Audubon Society for many years um, as an environmental educator. So. That's why um, I ha try to integrate as much nature into my teaching as possible. Um, I've been here at Eastline Middle School for, this is my 11th year here um, in the Neptunes Kiva. Um, and I do still work for Audubon on the side a little bit, a few times a year, uh, teaching with their owls and their hawks. Um, and so I share that with the students a lot too. I have um, two children at home. Uh, Katie, who is in second grade, and Jonah, who is in fifth grade this year, um, and I live in Lyme, so they go to school in Lyme. 
Um, so I have a fifth grader at home and a fifth grader at school, uh, which has been really great. I, I can draw a lot of parallels um, at home and at school. Um, and just a little bit about the science units for this year. Um, we're starting with properties of matter, which is a very hands-on unit, um, which is like fifth grade version of chemistry, basically. Um, and we use mystery science a lot in fifth grade. Um, it's a wonderful online um, curriculum that the uh, district bought, and um, we use it a lot in fifth grade. Uh, Earth systems is the next unit that we'll probably roll into, not necessarily in this order, um, but Earth systems, I believe, will come next, uh, where the students learn about the different systems of the Earth, the uh, geosphere on the surface of the Earth, the hydrosphere, uh, which is all the water on and above the Earth, the atmosphere, the biosphere, which is all of the living things on the Earth and how they all interact. Uh, part of that is the water cycle, the carbon cycle, the nitrogen cycle. Um, and then we roll into matter and energy in organisms and ecosystems. So you'll see this word systems comes up a lot in fifth grade. Um, so we can connect all these different um, units together by talking about what a system is. Um, and then space systems is probably going to be at the end of the year. We focus on close to home in fifth grade, Earth, Moon, and Sun, and how they uh, move in relation to each other, uh, the seasons, um, eclipses, the phases of the moon, and then we go out a little bit into the stars in fifth grade also. Um, later on in seventh or eighth grade, they cover the planets then. Um, and that's fifth grade science. So I think that's about it. Um, I'm enjoying your students and hope to meet you all someday. Hi, I'm Mrs. Bagley. I teach language arts on the Neptunes team. This is my 22nd year teaching here at East Lyme Middle School and 28th year overall teaching. I have a child at Flanders in fourth grade, so I know what a lot of your students went through last year as fourth graders and transitioning to the middle school for fifth grade. So I'm aware of the seesaw to Google um, classroom transition and trying to help the kids out with that. I don't know. So parents, thank you again for watching this virtual open house. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact any one of the Neptune's teachers.